This is part six of the basic Python programming tutorial for intermediate and beginning Blender users. I'm using version 2.63a. And uh, from the previous lesson, I have a basic particle system. But in this case, you can see I'm actually, there's a few things going on. One is way up here, I actually have a little physics effector, a magnet that's actually pulling the particles towards it. And I've also changed uh, some of the important characteristics of the particle system, like the start time, end frame, uh, how many particles, things of that nature, because just by adding the particle system by default like we did before, it won't give you that. So we'll do that in this lesson, and it uh, won't be an extensive lesson in this case. All right, so let's take a look. I'll just stop this right here. Let's see, we'll go back to the scripting window like this. Um, one of the things I had done was I did add the, uh, I did add globals to the rest of the colors up here like this. And I've added, let's see what else I did, just some simple things, just some basic things. Uh, oh yeah, here's the particle system stuff that you need to know about. Oh, this is an important point. Now notice here that this BPY, that offset object particle system add, we saw that in here when you did this, when we looked under here and we looked for the directory for that information, you saw it in there. And if I go back into the default window, and if I was to add a particle system, let me just put something, in, let me just put something in the scene real quick. Let me just add a cube or a plane to the scene right here. And if I was going to add a particle system to it like this, notice if I highlight my mouse over that, it actually says that a particle system is this bpy.ops.object particle system add. So I know what it is, right? But however, if I wanted to say change the number of particles, the start time and the end time, and the lifetime of the particles, which I do do in the code, notice it says particle settings dot lifetime. It's like, well, okay, but if you noticed from back in here when we had looked at the code, when we looked in here, let's see, let's see, dir uh, bpy dot ops dot object, like this, well there was particle system, particle system add, particle system removed, but I didn't see anything about, you know, lifetime, things like that, particle settings, something like that. And here's the critical things you need to know for starting. Here's your, uh, if you, well, here, you know, here's the, uh, let's go back to the default window for new users. Here's your start, this would be your start frame, and that's your end frame, and this is your lifetime of your particles, and that would be the default in here if you set it. And then uh, let's get rid of this particle. Let's get rid of this object here. And let's take a look at one of these down here. Now notice this is called fountain.127. It has a thousand particles. I set that. I didn't set that. That's default. But see the start frame is different. It's at 25, ends at 100. It has a lifetime of 150 particles. All right. And so if you look back in the code, that's exactly what I said. I set the start frame, frame underscore start, 25, frame underscore end, 100, and the lifetime, 150. Here's optionally, you can set, if you want to have hair particles versus the emitter, you can use that as well. I tried that, that does work. And here's where I named fountain, and it appended the dot 00102 for each additional instance of the object that got placed with the name fountain. And then the normal factor, the normal is the rate at which the particles emit from the face in a perpendicular direction. That's a mathematical term. All right, so, and then the other thing was the, um, let's see if you can see it in here. Look down here, right here, I added an empty to the scene. And then from the empty, I had gone over to the physics button and I added a, this magnetic force field like this. All right, so I'll just show you again. I'll just turn it off. I added the force field and I went up here and I picked magnetic. And that's all I had done. So now when the particles, otherwise they would go straight up. In fact, let's actually, let's just turn it off and see what happens. I'll turn it off and you'll see that the particles, when they cycle around for the next run, it would be like a fountain. They just run straight up following the normal of the plane. And then when I add, so you can experiment with these force fields all you want and add whatever you want. Let's put, we could put a vortex in there. It'll immediately start spinning it because the force field's up there. 
So, but that's not what we'll be using when we actually make a lot of the fountain effects because you can, we'll use sine waves and, you know, we'll control which one of these fires first and then the rate at which they fire relative to each other and things of that nature. You know, this, these kind of effects are fairly random. You can make them look good in some cases, but we want a little more precision in our effects, right? So, let's see, let's go back to the uh, magnetic effect. It's okay. And we we'll go back to the scripting. And then let me see, did I add anything else to the code in this case? Uh, the only other thing I did, I commented out our our conditional statement from the previous lesson. All right, well, I just wanted to set that up for you, just to let you take a look at this code, because for those of you who are familiar with Blender, this is pretty much all you need to get started, because then you can start adding in your own uh, features to that, and there's enough for you to just go running with it at this point. But we'll continue it within the, with the next lesson, and we'll start uh, doing more mathematics and uh, more features as well. All right, and I'll see you then.